Hi, Joe Pizinski here with Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Today I got a good one for you. For many years I worked in a valve company and cut a lot of internal conical angles on a lathe. And when I'm talking valves, I'm not talking the kind on the side of your house where you turn it, you know, you hook your garden hose up to it and turn it on. I'm talking the kind of valves that bring submarines up from the bottom of the ocean and deploy the landing gear on the space shuttle and valves like that. Well, every once in a while you're gonna get a dimension on an angle and you're going to look at it and you're going to say, yeah, you know, I'm really not sure I can hit that. Well, let me take the fear out of it for you and show you how to do that. Let's just say you have some engineer that has no clue how hard it is to cut a specific angle. Here's your center line of your part. Here's the face of your part sticking in the lathe. And here's your bore. Okay, not an unusual feature, right? Three things that you're going to know. Three things that they're going to ask for. This diameter right here is usually called out. And this angle is called out. Or the whole angle is called out. Now let's just say for yucks, this engineer really has uh, no consideration for how difficult it is to do these things. And he puts an angle out here, which is not unusual of 62 degrees 44 minutes now each degree is broken up into 60 minutes just like a minute is broken up into 60 seconds same thing with the angles so this is about 62 and three quarter degrees now I don't know what kind of engine lathe you guys have but I know that mine only has one degree increments on it and the incremental lines on the cross slide and the compound are just about the same thickness as the gap in between the lines and hitting this and guaranteeing that you're going to cut that angle is probably a shot in the dark. Alright, here's the trick. Take the total angle, you got to break it in half. That means this is 31 degrees, 22 minutes. Right there. Now you're probably saying so what, 62 degrees, 44 minutes, 31 degrees, 22 minutes. I don't care what it is, I can't hit either one of them. But if you know your lathe, it gets a little bit easier. Okay, take a look at this. Let's say you want to set this angle up on your lathe, on your compound, and single point that inside that bore. And you know, because I'm going to show you, how far you can crank your compound. Some compounds only do two inches, three inches, depending on how big 17, 19 inch lathes. You know, you might have some considerable range on your compound. So pick a good number that you're comfortable with. My 13 inch lathe, I know that I can get three inches out of it easy. So I'm gonna create a triangle here with a three inch hypotenuse or long leg, whatever you wanna call it. It's called a hypotenuse. I'm going to call it the long leg. I'm going to bounce back and forth to keep everybody happy. All right. Now this three inch leg of this particular triangle is not going to give you this feature. Right now this is just a construction triangle that you're working with. 31 degrees, 22 minutes. Now by construction, if you have parallel lines, I'm going to draw this for you because this is a good thing to know. If you have parallel lines, and you have a straight line that cuts across those parallel lines. You got a million things that just happened here. This angle will now equal this angle. Since they're parallel and it came across, this angle is the same as this angle, which is this one, which means these guys are the same, which means these guys are the same. This is 180 degrees this is 180 degrees and so on by construction you see all these things happen so to look at this you look for this Z that I like to see exist and here it is right here if this is 31 degrees 22 minutes here's your Z this is 31 degrees 22 minutes if this is 3 inches and that's 31 degrees 22 minutes you look for this I usually call it the drop now, I did this off camera, 
that particular height of the triangle right there is 1.561 and a half. All right, now that is going to be important. This is the angle that we need to cut. This is the drop, but it keeps getting better. That engineer was not only satisfied putting an impossible angle on this for you to cut, but he put a dimension from here to here, well, let's say plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. All right, that's the next thing I'm going to show you in the next video on is exactly how to measure that. Because a lot of people will put their calipers across the face and look at it with a loop and pray to God that the planet's lined up and you got your plus or minus two. But right, let's go one step beyond. Let's say you're the inspector and the guy that cut that angle, he broke the corner. He put a small 45 on it because it was sharp. So that point doesn't exist now. But you still have a plus or minus two dimension. You still have a critical angle, but you have construction. Let's go out in the shop. I'm going to show you how to set up your compound so that you can cut that all day and argue with the inspector when he says that he can't measure it because it's perfect. Let's take a walk. All right, guys. Well, this is where the magic happens. On a normal day at any given time, my compound is usually set flush with the face just specifically for rigidity. To set this angle, loosen up your slide and back it off as far as you can back it off. Come back around to zero and put a mark on your slide, your compound. I've done this before so I actually have a center punch mark in the side of the casting. I don't know if you can see them, there's two of them. Now see how much travel you have. Crank it out. I have a bunch of travel here, so I'm going to stop at the three inch mark. There's the hypotenuse from the board. Next thing you want to do is loosen up your adjustable nuts. Which is kind of hard to do with the camera in the way, but we're going to do it anyway. Look down here in your graduations and bump it around to where you think 31 degrees 22 minutes is going to be. I'm going to say right there. Snug it up. Okay guys, once you have your compound at an angle that you feel is pretty close, extend the nose of your tailstock and move your tailstock up into position and snug it up. Connect an indicator to your tool post. Set your cross slide dial at zero and then set your dial indicator at zero as well. Back your cross slide out. Until the hash mark that you just put on it with the Sharpie marker lines up with your reference point and zero that out as well. Now all you have to do here, it's a matter of just dialing in your compound or your cross slide And when the indicator needle hits zero, read your dial and you'll know what your dimension is of the outside leg. When you have the 3 inches 123 measurement or whatever measurement you're shooting for and you have a zero, zero on the 3 inch leg, snug up your compound. Make sure nothing moves. Repeat the process one time to make sure everything is as it was. Zero, zero, three inches. You've got the most accurate angle you could possibly set. 
already dialed in. Piece of cake. Okay, guys, quick recap of what we just saw on the shop. It really is easy. Tailstock, extend the nose of your tailstock spindle out far enough that it will accommodate at least three and a half inches, give or take, depending on what your compound is going to crank out. Put your indicator against your compound, the three inch or the standard that you use on your slide to calculate your angles. You multiply that given distance times the sign of the angle that is given on the print or half the angle depending on how it's dimensioned and that gives you your side. When you get to the lathe, you crank your slide in, don't move the compound, don't move the cross slide, excuse me, don't move the carriage, don't move the cross slide. Use the compound, start at zero, back it out, make sure you're not going to get bit by the backlash. You want to consistently travel in or out or whatever, but you've got to travel in the same direction. Use the graduations on your dial to come up with this number here. Once you've done it in your trig book, watch for your zero on your indicator at both points and you are golden. I hope this helped you. It works really well. I've cut some incredibly precision angles over the years and I've never had any rejected. Give it a try. You'll be very surprised at how amazingly accurate this technique really is. Okay. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. Keeps me inspired. Till then, Joe Pazinski, Advanced Innovations. I'm out.